The City Ground will once again open its doors to the Premier League this Friday night, but it will be opening it to the scum of the earth that is Sheffield United. Welcome to your match preview for Nottingham Forest versus Sheffield United. Good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever in the world you are. Whatever time of day you're watching this, hope you're doing well, and welcome to the match preview for Nottingham Forest versus Scum United. I can't stand them. I can't stand the club. I can't stand the manager heading bottom, man, because that's exactly where they are going with that prick of a manager. Hope you guys are doing well. We're going to get into this coming up in the video today. We'll show you what I think Steve Cooper's predicted team will be. I'll tell you the team that I would go with, and then we'll touch on Sheffield United. And straight at the end of this video, make sure you check out the in-depth analysis on Sheffield United, done by Dino on FFTV High Press. That will link on the end screen if you're watching later, or if you're watching the premiere, you'll be able to just sit there and enjoy with the popcorn. Before we get started, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And let's get into this and let's start with a predicted team. All right, guys, so let's get into this. And I want to start with Cooper's predicted team or what I think it will be. And I'm going to say from the off, this cannot be a low block fest. This has to be all out, not all out attack, but all out possession, all out domination. It needs to be all the right signs. I'll say it again, Cooper said towards the end of last season, he doesn't want to play in this style. This isn't the football he wants to play. What better chance to do it than under the lights of the city ground against a crappy Sheffield United team who have lost all their best players? There is no other opportunity apart from, say, Luton at home, where if he's going to showcase what he's going to do, it's got to be now. And I will judge him on this game. Not in terms of scoreline. I mean, I would expect us to smash Sheffield United. But I'm talking in the play style. I am sick and tired of low block football. Fine against the Arsenal aways, the uh, Man City's coming up away, Chelsea's, etc. But at home, against teams that we should be expected not just to beat but win comfortably he has to show a pair of kahunas in this match and he has to play proper football and i get worried that the players are just so used to low block that they may struggle so for me this is a judgment game i don't care if you, anyone agrees or disagrees with me this is my personal opinion and i am sick to the back teeth of last season showing respect to crap teams playing low block football home and away you know it was the crowd that got us over the line in a lot of the games last year so i expect a completely different attitude in this game and i do not expect three at the back so this is the team i think cooper will go with then i'll show you what i would go with because i don't see how he's going to drop certain players Worrell will start, I think, alongside Nia Kate at the back because Nia Kate has played a mid-season match, to, a mid-season game, sorry, to get some minutes in his legs. So I think he's going to be fit enough to start. I don't think Felipe is quite ready. He didn't play midweek. He may be rolled out because he is just that Rolls Royce. We know he doesn't train every single session. They do wrap him up in cotton wool. But if Felipe is fit, then he has to drop Worrell into the back four. And it will be near Kate and Felipe. They are our two best centre backs. Whatever anyone says, that's my opinion on it. Maybe you agree or disagree. I think he'll go with Aurier and Einar for left and right back. Personally, I wouldn't go with Aurier. I think he's he started slow. He's had a sluggish preseason. I'd actually go Biancone, but we'll get into my team in just a minute. And this is where I think he's going to have his headaches. So I think the back four or five is going to be easily picked. Obviously, Turner in goal. It's what does he do in the middle? And I see him going for some kind of diamond formation, a 3-1-2 um, in attack. And I don't think he likes to break up this three. I think this three in midfield is his favorite. Danilo, Mangala and Yates. And I'm not convinced by them as a combo, as a trio. I think individually they've all got strengths. But Danilo, I obviously love. 
It's Mangala and Yates where I still question it. I don't think either of them are a full out CDM. And I think they're playing out of position when they have to do it. And I think both of them lack a lot when it comes to passing and progressing the ball forward and kind of breaking through the lines into that final third. And you're going to need one or two of them to do that. Obviously, Danilo has been brilliant at it at the end of last year. So I do think Cooper will still go with that preferred three. MG Dub, he's never going to drop him. Um, so he's going in, even though he had a bad game at Arsenal. I still think MG Dub at the City ground does perform better than he does away in the majority of the instances. There are exceptions to that rule, like Crystal Palace, for example, at the end of last season. A one year will start. I think he's fit enough because he came on against Arsenal, got 20 minutes in his leg and legs and looked really sharp for me. And then the question becomes Jono or Elanga. Now, I think the fan base is crying out for Elanga to start. But if Cooper goes in this formation, it can't happen. There's only one real formation where Cooper can fit them all in. And I'll be showing you that as my preferred starting 11. So, although I've put Jono up front, it's still going to be wide on the right. You'll probably see a one you play more centrally with Jono drifting out to the right. And then MGW and Danilo providing the support in the, um, in the latter half of the pitch. So if he goes with this team, it should be enough to beat Sheffield United. It's a case of it doesn't really matter what team we put out there. It's about the mentality they go out there with the instructions they're provided from Cooper and his staff. Will they be told to attack, 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 press from the front, put the pressure under Sheffield United, who play extremely narrow football? And this formation, although should work, may not work because as you'll see on the video from Dino from the high press, you'll see that Sheffield United go for a, a narrow block through that middle of the park. So if you're going to get around them, you're going to need width. And hopefully, hopefully we don't see this formation and we see the one that I'll show you in a second. But overall, this team should be strong enough. Pound for pound, there's not a better player on that Sheffield United team in any position um, when you put them heads up against the Forest players. And this really has to be a comfortable win for Nottingham Forest. It also has to be a good performance. But that's the team I predict Cooper will go with. Barring injuries in terms of Warrell, maybe Iwanyi. And will he go with Jono ahead of Alanga? I think he will. But get your thoughts in. Do you agree with this team or not? And let's move on and let me show you my predicted team. Okay, so my predicted team is going to be in a slightly different formation and I'm going to experiment with a couple of players if it was my choice. So let me bring this one up and shock horror, I've gone for a four, two, three, one. And the re main reason I'm doing this is because we do have a good attacking set of players. I love the idea of a one Yi, Jono, Elanga and MGW all on the pitch. That to me has pace, it has power, it has skill and should scare the crap out of any defense. I don't care how high up the league you are. If you've got pace and you've got attack and you've got defense coming at you, then you are going to struggle. You are going to struggle to defend or you're at least going to respect that attack and not commit too many men forward which then means the battle comes in midfield. Now, I get the argument of two in the middle is going to be you know, hard for them to handle. I get that. But I think between Danilo and Mangala, they can do it, especially if Mangala plays as more of the holder and Danilo plays more in the eight. And then MG Dub, he does track back. He is okay at tracking back. Yes, his tackling isn't brilliant, but at least he becomes an extra body and a presence. And Elanga is really good at tracking back with that pace. Jono, not so much, but I don't mind that. I don't mind leaving one or two players forward to allow for a counter-attack spring. But I personally would expect if the mentality and the instructions were correct with this team, we should see a domination of possession. This could be the first time since Forrest are back in the Premier League that we see over 50% possession. In fact, I would expect and demand it. Sheffield United, as I've already said, are completely in the mud and should be terrified of this game. Best players gone. Dumbass manager. And this dumbass manager, may I add, has taken a stud from one of the boots of a Forest player 
from the playoffs. He's got it framed and in a glass case in his office at that scummy place of theirs at Sheffield. And he will be bringing that to the match on Friday as a little, you know, trophy, as a little token, as a reminder, because not only do I not like them, and I'm sure most of you don't, he hates us and he really has a grudge and a vendetta, especially after that semi-final. Now, my hatred goes all the way back to 2003 and goddamn Warnock being there as well. But I don't care who's in charge. I can't stand either of them. But the team itself is completely in the mud. They got absolutely dominated by Palace. Okay, they only lost 1-0. But as you'll see in the, um, in the analysis video just after this, they're terrible. They're absolutely shocking. So Cooper shouldn't be scared here to play a more advanced and attacking team. And I honestly look at this team and I think this team looks good. Okay, I've taken some risks. I've put Biancone in at right back, mainly because he has pace, mainly because he looks sharp. He's had minutes as well um, at midweek. He was playing alongside Nia Kate. And I would go for Bolly. I've been impressed with Bolly. If Felipe's not fit. Okay, Warrell, I don't think had a bad game at Arsenal. I think he was quite solid, put in some really good tackles. But again, I just feel the brute strength of Bolly alongside Nia Kate would not be a bad combo, especially if Felipe is not fit. Enough for me has been a revelation so far. I don't want to big him up too much yet because he's only had a couple of games. But so far, what I've seen from him, I've been really impressed with. And even in preseason, you could see that link up play between him and Alanga starting to develop and form. And that's why I want to see both of them on the left side of the pitch. On top of that, Elanga in a one, you scored that beautiful counter-attacking goal. So how could you drop either of them from the team? And as I keep mentioning, the only way you can put this front four together, I mean, you could invert this into a 4-3-3 if you want to drop MGW slightly deeper. But as a 4-2-3-1, I think it works absolutely top notch. So yes... I get it. There's a couple of risks there with Biancone. You have options though. You could put Williams in there. I wouldn't. I prefer him as a right wing back. If it wasn't going to be Biancone, Aurier is good in a back four. I'm just worried about his current form. And I don't want to be sentimental about him. He was one of my players of the season for the first half of last year. He did degrade towards the end of the season. But I'm hoping he can find that form back. But I do look at this team. And I do think it should scare at least the bottom half of the table. But this is just my opinion. What would you guys do? Do you prefer the team I think Cooper will go with? Or do you think it's time to go attacking and take that scum down and go with this 4-2-3-1? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, speaking of the scum and the scum that's managed by Sitting Bottom, this is the team that they went with against Crystal Palace. And for me, this team, I'm not going to lie to you, I could barely name them. If you showed me this team on a piece of paper and said, let me know which team it is, I'd say I don't know, but they look shit. And that's exactly what they are. And they tend to play in a back three. It's kind of a 3-4-3 three, three formation. And this is why going 4-2-3-1 against it isn't too bad at all, because if you're pushing the fullbacks back. Now, we all know Lowe, of course, after his loan spell at Nottingham Forest, and he did have a decent season last year. But I refused to watch Sheffield United when they were in the championship last year. In fact, I didn't really watch too much championship. That's beneath us and beyond us. Um, but outside of, of Lowe and obviously Osborne, the ex-Forest players, don't give a crap about the rest. And, you know, do I give a crap about Love and Osborne? Not really. They're not Forest anymore. And they've made their way across to the scum. So, anyway, it's more about the shape that I want to discuss here with. Because I don't know the rest of them. They all look crap. They got some dumbass names as well. Basham. Basham up. I mean, seriously, Norwood. That's a good golf course in Nottingham. But apart from that, what's the relation? Bulldog sounds like an absolute cock. Egan. And what the hell? Ahmed Hudazic. It's like half Arab, half Croatian name there. Very strange. And then Fodderingham in goal. Fodderingham? My God, what a dumb name. Anyway, so this is the way they may line up. And that's why you can go the 4-2-3-1, as I was saying, because you can still outnumber that midfield, especially if you can push low and Boldcock <laughs> back 
uh, and turn them into a five. Then you can double up with um, Einar down the wing, maybe Aurier down the other, really pushing them back. And that's what I want to see. But the proper analysis, the serious non-name calling analysis, again, just to remind you, will be at the end of this video. But screw Sheffield United, man. Seriously, I can't stand them. I've got them like one notch below Derby and level with Varchester United on my hatred scale. I really can't stand them. And I really need Cooper to give me a result on this. Now that I'm talking the big man talk, he really has to pull this one out the bag. But if you're scared of any of these players, let me know in the comments down below. I expect the comments to be blank. I really do. But get your thoughts in on the Sheffield United team. Okay, so let's get into the predictions. And if things go as I expect them to go, this should and needs to be a comfortable win for Nottingham Forest. I, I'm not talking 7-8-0 here, but I do expect a 2 3 0 with some good play. I don't expect to see Sheffield United get that many chances on our goal. And I do expect to see progressive, open, hand breakdown football from the way Cooper sets them up. Now, there is a chance that he will set up in a back three. I, I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility. And if he does do that, I will be disappointed. Because I would still, even with the back three setup, expect us to beat Sheffield United. But he has to remove one of the defenders to add in another attacking option and show he's got a set of kahunas and that he is not scared from sitting bottom at Sheffield United. So I'm going to predict on this one a 2-0, maybe a 3-0 to Nottingham Forest with 55% possession with 18 shots on goal, 8 on target. And I'm going to say a one year is going to keep that streak going. He's going to go 6-6 six six with also a home debut goal for Alanga if he starts. But get your thoughts and score predictions down below. I'm really keen to see what you guys think. Do any of you think we should go a little more kind of low blocky or mid blocky rather than, you know, put Sheffield United in the firing line? I'm just excited for this game. I've got so much vented anger for them and I'm looking forward to the watch along for this. Get your thoughts in, guys. If you haven't already, please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And there's only like 50 tickets, I think, left for this Morgan Gibbs White beautiful beautiful sign framed LED TV um, shirt. So make sure you go and grab those. The link for it is in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned because we're going to head straight over to the high press now for some proper non bantery um, analysis on Sheffield United. That's coming your way in 30 seconds. Come on, you Reds.